I wasn't ready. I have no arms and no legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. <laughs> People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down. And here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? And there were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms and legs, I wish I had arms and legs, I wish I had arms and legs, because wishing won't help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's hand? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Oh boy. Woo! It's freezing, I can't feel my hands. <laughs> I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand and you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use in yours. Being patient is beautiful. I, I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are beautiful. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And you boys, you're the man. <laughs>
you know, mm -hmm. breastfeed me and all that. Um, she just felt very uncomfortable for the first four months and it took them quite a while before they could trust in God that he didn't make a mistake, that he didn't forget them or me. Nick's parents gave their fear and even disappointment in their son's disability over to the Lord. They chose to trust God and his promise that he had a plan and purpose, a hope and a future for their son. But as the years passed, Nick, on the other hand, had many challenges trusting in a God that he felt gave him less. I challenged God. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I won't probably have peace until you're in my heart, but I will not let you in my heart until you answer me why. Why did you take my arms and legs? Why didn't you give me what everybody else has? And I said, God, until you answer me that question, I will not serve you. And so I wanted to end it. If God wasn't going to end my pain, I was going to end it myself. So at age eight, I tried to drown myself in a bathtub of four inches of water. I told my mom and dad, I'm just going to relax in the bathtub. Can you put me in the bathtub? And uh, yeah, I turned over a couple times to see if I could do it, I couldn't do it. Um, the thought that stopped me from going through with it was the love for my parents. Because um, I, I love them so much and all they did was love me. And I thought to myself, if I actually went through with this, I pictured my funeral, I pictured my parents, and I saw was guilt on their shoulders that they couldn't have done more. That would be the last time Nick would attempt suicide. But it wouldn't be the last time he would come face to face with those deep issues that made him want to end the pain. And that's when I started seeing that there is no point in being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside. And I found out that God can heal you without changing the circumstance. What was it specifically for you that made you say, Lord, I'm going to trust your word because I know it's true. I'm going to trust you even if I don't know what you have in store for me tomorrow. Right because there was nothing else I could find. Mm. There was nothing else that could give me peace. I knew arms and legs wouldn't give me peace anyway, arms and legs alone. Um, I needed to know the truth of who I am, why I'm here, and where I'm going when I'm not here. Mm. And I haven't found that truth anywhere else but in Jesus Christ. And it was in Jesus Christ where Nick found the strength to do what many thought would be the impossible. It's so hard to be strong when people constantly say, you're not good enough, you, you know, go away, you know, we don't want anything to do with you. Nick, you're a nobody. Nick, you can't do this. Nick, you can't do that. Nick, 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 Nick. In life, if you don't know the truth, then you can't be free. Because then you'll believe that the lies are the truth. But once we realize that when we read the Word of God and you know the truth of who you are, I am not a man without arms and legs. I'm a, I am a child of God. I am forgiven of my sins. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm nothing but a servant of the Most High God. This is not about Nick. It's not about Nick's capacity and capability to become this conqueror. I am nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing. God, though, lives in me. And I now live in his strength. And whatever Jesus conquered, I conquer. I believe if God doesn't give you a miracle, you are a miracle of God for somebody else's salvation. And I thank God that he didn't answer my prayer when I was begging him for arms and legs at age eight. Because guess what? Because I have no arms and no legs, he's using me all around the world. And we've seen so far, approximately, uh, this is conservative, 200,000 souls come to Jesus Christ for the very first time in the last six, seven years. And what would you rather? Would you rather have arms and legs, Nick, here on earth and no arms? No. Whatever his will is. Because I'd rather have no arms and no legs temporarily here on earth to be able to reach someone else for Jesus Christ and then spend eternity with them there. In the last decade, Nick has shared his story in 24 countries to over 3 million people. And whether he's talking to a stadium packed with people or one single person, his heart behind the message is the same. God loves you, that he hasn't forgotten your pain, he hasn't forgotten your family. And maybe while you're watching this interview, you've compared your suffering to my suffering. 
And that's not where hope is, to know that someone else, in your opinion, is suffering more than you. That's not where hope is. But hope is in the name of God, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is when you compare your suffering to the infinite, immeasurable love and grace of God. Isaiah 40, verse 31, says, Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength, that shall mount up on wings as eagles. I didn't need my circumstance to change. I don't need arms and legs. I need the wings of the Holy Spirit. And I'm flying because I know Jesus is holding me up. Don't give up on God, because God will not give up on you. Where do we go when hope runs out? When we're empty? When there's nothing left?
Something